Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for today's virtual media briefing about COVID-19 in London and Middlesex County. We're glad to have you along with us. Also happy to be joined this afternoon by the Mayor of London, Ed Holder, as well as the Executive Vice President, Interim Chief Clinical Officer and Vice President of Clinical Serv Clinical Programs rather, at London Health Sciences Centre, Kathy Vandersloos, and the Medical Officer of Health for the Middlesex London Health Unit, Dr. Alex Summers. Glad to have you along with us as well. Uh, we had a bit of a break last week, so it's nice to be back. Uh, just a reminder for the media in attendance this afternoon, if you do have questions for uh, either Ms. Vandersloos, Mayor Holder, or Dr. Summers, just click on the Q&A icon here on Microsoft Teams. And when you do, if you could indicate who your question is for and also your name and media outlet. And finally, a welcome this afternoon to those folks joining us on Rogers Television, as well as the Rogers Facebook page and YouTube channel, and viewers on the CTV London website. Let's begin with our opening remarks, and we'll start today with Mayor Ed Holder. Mayor Holder. Well, thanks, Dan, and good afternoon, everyone. Look, I hope everyone's taking advantage of the great weather and doing your best to stay cool. And we've spoken, you know, a lot about the importance of outdoor activities over the last two years, many announcements coming through the city with that, in that respect. And now we've got the kinds of conditions that make it extremely easy to do that. So, personally, I hope everyone's able to safely enjoy the sunshine over the next little while. Where COVID's concerned, you'll know that earlier in the week, I terminated the municipal state of emergency, which was originally declared back on March 20th, 2020, when the impacts of the pandemic were first being felt here in London and around the world. I want to take the opportunity to thank staff and all the community organizations and city departments who worked tirelessly to support Londoners throughout the pandemic. I also get a chance to say thank you very much to the Middlesex London Health Unit to the senior staff and everyone who day by day by day have been constantly working with our great community to keep it safe. And as we have our friends from uh, the London Health Sciences uh, Center on the line, it behooves me as well to say thank you to our frontline folks. Uh, you make such a difference and you have over these last couple of years uh, worked so hard under very stressing conditions. I say that not because the pandemic is over, far from it, but because I think having lifted the state of emergency, I think we can go forward with more confidence than we have in the past. And I sincerely look forward to uh, the continued dedication and commitment that you all make to keep our community safe. And that commitment has been unwavering. The past few years have been easy, have not. And I extend my thanks to all the residents and the businesses who followed our local and our provincial health regulations in the interests of community health and of safety. Looking ahead, it's going to be important for all Londoners to continue to be diligent as COVID-19 continues to remain a concern. Together, however, we've now reached a point in this pandemic where we can safely end the state of emergency. So as I said earlier, my hope is that everyone takes stock of how far we've come, enjoy the outdoor, outdoors, and let's ensure that we continue the positive momentum throughout the summer months and beyond. No one wants to go back these last two years. Let's go forward. So with that, uh, that'll be it for me for now, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Summers, please. Thank you, Mayor Holder, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, with regards to COVID, the health unit is reporting an additional 29 COVID cases today with no additional deaths. Over the weekend, a total of 61 COVID cases were reported, 30 on Saturday and 31 on Sunday. No additional deaths were reported over the weekend. This brings us to a total of 38,149 COVID cases in the London and Middlesex region since the beginning of the pandemic in early 2020. The number of deaths now stands at 391. The trends in COVID-19 uh, continue to show a slight decline and plateau. We are likely getting close to what might be our baseline of COVID activity. It's critical for all to remember that even as we see COVID cases settle and remain low, that the risk of COVID-19 remains in our community, which is why taking those opportunities to get vaccinated, if eligible, and boosted when that time comes is so important. The White Oaks Mall Vaccination Clinic uh, will continue to operate through June. 
uh, operating uh, out of the space near the Tim Hortons, uh, near the mall's food, food court uh, from Thursday through Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Our mass vaccination clinic sites out in Mount Bridges and at the Western Fair Agriplex in London continue to operate. There are many opportunities to get boosted and vaccinated. If you're over the age of 60, you're eligible for that fourth dose or second booster, and it's critical to get protected. We've received lots of questions about when those under the ages of 60 may be eligible for their second booster dose. It is unlikely that that eligibility will be expanded imminently. You continue to have substantial protection from that third dose. And as we head into the fall, there will certainly be opportunities for additional booster dose protection, and we'll be certainly announcing that information when it is available. On the non-COVID file, it is a hot indeed day out there and the health unit has released a heat alert uh, given that daytime temperatures are expected to reach 31 degrees Celsius with Humidex levels of 36 and conditions quite muggy. Therefore, we have issued that heat alert in keeping with Environment Canada parameters. And so we strongly advise everyone to make sure you're staying hydrated, stick to the shade, wear your sun protection, and of course, look out for your neighbors and for young ones. Our next media briefing will be on uh, June, pardon me, will be in two weeks from now, whenever that is on June 13th, will be on the Monday. Um, and we are looking forward to that. Uh, in the time that between here and now, I did want to acknowledge ever so briefly on behalf of the Middlesex London Health Unit that the one year anniversary of the tragic terrorist attack will be coming up next Monday, June 6th. Um, there are many events happening throughout our community, and I know that our city leadership will be guiding us through these challenging times. Uh, but from the health unit, we remember the Afazal family and we remember young Fayez as he continues to heal. Those were very challenging days and the days continue. And uh, certainly from the health unit to our staff, um, to our community members, we won't have the opportunity to speak to you between now and that event, but we remember. With that, I'm going to pass things over to Kathy Vandersloos from London Health Sciences Centre. Thank you very much, Dr. Summers. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me here to share an update on the COVID-19 situation at London Health Sciences Centre. And thank you, Mary, Mayor Holder, for your very kind words on behalf of our team and our frontline staff. I agree it has been a long, long haul, and they have continued to amaze us as to how they have risen above and beyond the challenges of the day in order to serve our community. As of this morning, we're caring for 33 COVID-19 positive inpatients, and we have five or fewer patients in critical care. In our children's hospital, there are five or fewer pedi pediatric inpatients with COVID-19, and no patients with COVID-19 are in the pediatric critical care unit. We currently have three units under active outbreak for COVID-19, and we're working with our partners in infection control, as well as unit staff, to end these outbreaks as soon as possible. And I would say we are pleased to see that the numbers continue to trend down, but as Dr. Summers reminds us, COVID is still here within our community. And as we continue to see nice weather, please try to socialize outdoors whenever possible. And when indoors, please continue to follow health precautions, physically distancing, masking, proper hand hygiene, and fully concur with Dr. Summers. Please avail yourself of available vaccinations uh, if you are eligible. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions. And thank you very much, uh, Kathy Vandersloos, Dr. Alex Summers, and Mayor Ed Holder. All right, we do have um, Got about five questions in the queue this afternoon. And again, an invitation if you are a member of the media, if you'd like to ask a question, just click on the question mark inside the text bubble here on Microsoft Teams to ask your question. Dan Brown is joining us this afternoon from the London Free Press. Dr. Summers, he has a few questions for you and then a question for Mayor Holder as well. Uh, Dan asks, Dr. Summers, we've been hearing a lot about monkeypox how concerned should Londoners be about catching it in our region? Is it at all similar to COVID? Have you been testing people here for monkeypox since cases emerged in Montreal? Uh, thanks for that question, Dan. Yes, the news has been full of information on the monkeypox virus. 
the risk of, of monkeypox in the Middlesex London region uh, remains very low. Uh, monkeypox is uh, a virus that is transmitted predominantly from direct skin to skin contact um, and direct contact with either the skin lesions caused by the, caused by the monkeypox virus or the bodily fluid that might come from the vesicle or the, the bump if it were to rupture. The risk in our community, as I mentioned, is very low. The transmission tendencies of monkeypox are very different at this time uh, than what we've seen with COVID-19. And so the response in the community and the response even for us as a health unit is also different. If somebody does develop a rash consistent with monkeypox, healthcare providers in our regions are on the lookout. Um, and they will be reporting to the province in addition to us and appropriate testing will occur. Um, at this point in time, uh, we have not uh, identified a case of monkeypox in our region. Um, however, as I mentioned, we've been in communication as a health unit with all relevant healthcare providers and partners in order to ensure that should any suspicious cases arise, that appropriate follow-up and testing uh, is put into place. Uh, but I would emphasize again that the risk to Middlesex London remains very low. This is a different thing than COVID-19. Thank you very much, Dr. Summers. Uh, there is some follow-up uh, questions again from Dan Brown for you. Um, Dan asks, Dr. Summers, Thursday is election day in Ontario. Are you anticipating the mass gathering of people in person, for example, lining up at polling stations, will have any kind of impact on the COVID curve? Did the federal election last September 20th, and, or in September of 2020, have any, no, September 20th, have any kind of effect that was noticeable? Uh, thanks for that question, Dan. Yes, Thursday is election day, and, and it goes without saying, uh, get out and vote, um, and being able to uh, take advantage of our opportunities to vote is a true privilege. Um, and you're strongly encouraged to do so. There's certainly no COVID barriers to doing so. I do not anticipate uh, any substantial risk increase from uh, people attending polling stations. Uh, often polling stations are very uh, controlled and monitored environments. I would encourage you to wear a mask when attending indoors. Um, and of course, uh, in doing so, you can reduce the risk to yourself and those around you. Uh, we did not see a substantial increase or outbreak as a result of the federal election last September, and I am not foreseeing any difficulties with the election this coming Thursday. Thanks, Dr. Summers. And let's go to uh, another question for you from Dan Brown. Uh, Dr. Summers, when will the age threshold drop below 60 years old for those who are looking for a fourth shot that is a second booster. Uh, thanks for that question, Dan. Uh, at this time, uh, I don't know the answer. I don't anticipate that the age threshold for that fourth shot or second booster will be dropping below 60 uh, in the imminent future. I likely think we will be looking into the late summer and early fall. Um, the reason for that is because the risk of poor outcome for those under the age of 60 is substantially low if you've had all three vaccines that you've been eligible for to date. Uh, the relative benefit of the fourth dose at this time for those under the age of 60, given the drop in, given the dropping rates of COVID in our community, uh, is not going to be as impactful as it would be as if we give that booster closer to the fall when we're going to be heading into another respiratory virus season. Um, so I don't anticipate that. I do know that the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, as well as uh, provincial experts are looking at this issue as we speak and will wait any guidance from them, but I am not anticipating any announcement, certainly in the next few weeks. Thank you very much, Dr. Summers. Uh, the next question is for Mayor Holder, and it's from Dan Brown. Mayor Holder, speaking of sunshine, says Dan Brown, do you know if there have been any challenges recruiting staff? I'm thinking lifeguards for city aquatic services like pools this spring. Well, thanks, Dan. I appreciate uh, that question. Uh, there's always interest every summer uh, when we can pick up uh, summer students typically to handle a number of tasks, be it in the uh, in our uh, in our area pools in uh, Storybrook Gardens, for example, and uh, other facilities that we have around the city. 
and we always have a really, really good uptake. I would add that uh, that this year, unlike the last couple when it's been so challenging because of COVID, uh, the uptake has been very enthusiastic. Uh, but there may well be opportunities and we would invite people to go to london.ca slash aquatics uh, if they're interested uh, in uh, applying. And for those who are interested in general employment opportunities, just go to london.ca and look under the employment category there to see uh, uh, to see what is available. But the good news is uh, London City Hall is alive and well in hiring and uh, encouraging uh, people to uh, look to our website. That's the process that they use. And for our young people, uh, don't give up on us. Keep trying and uh, make sure you get your application in soon. Appreciate it, Dan. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Holder. And uh, we're down to our last question. So uh, if you are uh, holding back a question uh, and you're a member of the media on this afternoon's briefing, now would be the time to get that question in. So we're going to move to uh, that last question. Dr. Summers, this one is for you. It comes to us from Sawyer Bogdan from Global News Radio 980 CFPL. Uh, Dr. Summers, is there any concern about the number of outbreaks at University Hospital over the last couple of weeks? Uh, how are the outbreaks going? Actually, in reading the question again, I think this is probably, Kathy, this would be for you, and, and my apologies for that, Kathy Vandersloos. No problem. Sawyer, thank you for your question. No overt concern around the number of outbreaks at University Hospital, and uh, I have to say that as long as COVID remains in our community, then we can expect that there is the potential to have these pop-up outbreaks. And just to remind uh, our community that uh, it's as little as two hospital-acquired uh, patient cases that then constitutes an outbreak. And an outbreak is called as an opportunity to then just refocus and see if all measures as we expect them are in place. Is there anything that we need to tweak? And so really it's just a prudent measure to call that outbreak. I can report that all of the outbreaks are stable and are progressing in the right direction, which is uh, excellent. Thanks again, Kathy, for, for that uh, response. Much appreciated. And that does bring us to the end of our questions on this afternoon's virtual media briefing. Uh, just a reminder that as we move into June, the virtual media briefings are moving to a bi-weekly schedule. So our next virtual media briefing, as you heard Dr. Summers mention off the top, will be on Monday the 13th of June and then the following one on Monday the 27th of June. And then we will take uh, a break for the summer and should there be a need for more virtual media briefings, we will return in the fall. So that is all for today. We hope you have a great rest of your Monday afternoon, a great rest of your week. We will be back on the 13th of June. We hope you'll join us then. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day and so long for now.